And we're live. Hi, everyone. We've got me, Neela Patel, here, the owner, designer, and educator at Silver Silk and More. And I've got the fabulous Miss Cassandra Spicer with me from Beads to Live By. Thanks, Cassandra, for always joining in our BD fun. I'm delighted anytime that you do get to come on and hang out with us for a little bit of time. And I'm just uh, thanking the stars that we even got to meet in this virtual bead world that we now live in. <laughs> I know. Um, how are you doing? I'm good. Thank you. I totally agree with you. I tell people all the time, there are people that, you know, in the last two years, I probably would not have ever connected with if it wasn't for all the changes in our world. So as much as there was negativity, I feel like there was definitely some positive things that came out of it. I think it does take like it's helpful to just kind of step back and look at the bigger picture and to draw out some of those positive things to help kind of keep us in a buoyant and good attitude. Um, and I, I think since I've met you, I've always appreciated that about you. You're quite empathetic and um, sympathetic also to a lot of stuff and people and things. And that uh, kindness is definitely something that I always have gravitated toward uh especially with you so i'm just thankful to be your friend um, Aww, well i appreciate that the the empathy i've learned as an adult i have to it's it's like a, a reverse superpower <laughs> i have to like temper it sometimes because it can just be overwhelming because you feel so much of like what's going on around you and with other people but there's people that balance it out well and you are definitely one of those people so i equally <laughs> appreciate our friendship Oh, thank you. I mean, these are all just the personal things, right? But not to mention that you are a very, very talented beater and just so happened to come across and um, we've interacted as Silver Silk and Beats to Live By and we've been able to kind of merge our super abilities to be great designers and creators into these classroom settings. And you have time and time again come up with fantastic projects. So I'm excited to learn what you have to teach us tonight. And you've come up with something really awesome. I'm not surprised. So I was wondering if you could talk us through um, that project or techniques that's going to be involved. Absolutely. So um, I was just really inspired. And obviously, I've done a handful of things already with your pipe chain. But um, I admittedly have not finished off the ends of this yet. But we'll go over that tonight. And um, I just created these little beaded beads with that fabulous, um, uh, I, it, it's just sitting next to the pipe chain, really. And I've got a size 8 and a size 11 seed bead in there, and then a 3 millimeter fire polish bead. So that is the only thing that's required for the beaded bead. And the rest of it is all stringing material and spacer beads and... Um, these, these beads happen to be from our mutual fantastic friend, Heather Powers, and were something that was just in my bead stash. So mm -hmm. I wanted to um, use that because they just went so well with the rest of my colors. And that was after I'd finished making those beads. I, you know, sometimes I know you probably know this. You, you start working on something and don't know what you're going to do with what you're working with. And then it's like, as you design, you have to come up with, um, find other pieces to go along with it to work out what you're, you know, like the direction you're headed. I don't know. There's just something very wrong with the artistic brain. I think. <laughs> or are we just like using up our bead hoard that we like purposely want to keep it as a hoard and don't want to use up? <laughs> yeah. That Why is... are you making me use up beads that I don't want to? I just want to <laughs> add beads to my hoard. <laughs> absolutely that, that hits the nail on the head so <laughs> <laughs> no it, in all seriousness though I, I totally get that because I was I found myself doing that the other day because I'm getting ready to replenish and uh, restock my flat mesh with a brand new collection of flat mesh um, it's Ooh. going to replace the old style with this new one the weaving the the knits are much tighter so, which really means a lot of things. Um, but one big thing that's going to come out of it is that it's going to help support um, larger and heavier pendants and it won't distort the shape, which I think is phenomenal. Um, and then there's just a few colors that were either going to be discontinued or added on to. Um, but 
back to the original point because I found myself going in all directions <laughs> there. Um, with totally these fine. different and new styles, yeah, it's always a good time. Um, I'm trying to make examples with each one of them and photograph them, and include them on the sites so that customers can kind of see the actual color versus what the you know the the stylized photo is. Yeah. Um, so I found myself doing that with my bead stash the other day. I was like, I have this thing that I kind of want to create. I don't want to step outside that. Oh, I just found 10 more things that I would love to add to this. And then <laughs> here we are. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. It is definitely like the curse of the artistic person, I think, to have to deal with. I mean, I don't know. It's, it's not, I guess it's not really a negative thing, but it still feels like, I don't know, a little difficult at times to <laughs> brain is kind of simply like jumped around, right? So kind of kind of managing it. Yeah, I can I can understand that. <laughs> Speaking of that, I, I totally it. left a tool off to the side here. So I'm just gonna grab that real quick. But oh, I'm still okay. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. Um well in fact while you're doing that, I'm just gonna say hi to a few people that are tuning in. We've got Miss Amber Scott and Peggy and Rosalinda and Colleen are here. Hi, Sherry. And uh, let's see, we've got, got several. We got lots of folks over from YouTube. And I'm gonna see um, if I can actually switch to your camera view. Awesome. <laughs> Joan says, Facebook isn't working tonight. It Definitely always has its issues. So luckily we are on the YouTube though. <laughs> you know, I was talking to the girls over on the Softflex page about this. It seems like no matter when we do these videos and no matter what else is going on, there's like problems with something, right? Like you can yeah. never just like do what you need to do and be done with it. <laughs> it's so true. Even um, as things are scheduled, it's sometimes... I don't know, it just has a weird like fob at the end that kind of screws everything up. But luckily, again, because it is recording to YouTube, I'm pretty happy with that. And uh, it's yeah. going to be some good quality uh, video content for beating. And your um, your tutorial will come in nice and, and clean here. So I'm excited about it. Awesome. So I am working with a... 10 pound beading thread. I like the wildfire thread for this particular project, mm -hmm. but um, those that enjoy fire line and things like that, that's fine too. And then a size 10, uh, sorry, not a size 10, a size 11 or 12 needle will also work. Um, for those that are not bead weavers, you definitely want to look for a dedicated beading needle and not a sewing needle. Those are two very different things. So something I don't know if I've remembered the point out in the past but um and then we've got like I said earlier a size 8 seed bead a three millimeter fire polish and then a size 11 seed bead and I have all of these things listed on our website so um I know Neely has posted links previously and probably at some point you know there's links that pop up in the broadcast it's just our business name beads to live by.com and Neelay, maybe you can um, remind me of the colors. I know this is the bronzite in your mm -hmm. pipe chain, which I know you've got like a whole selection of the pipe chain in different colors. And I just don't remember what color I'm working with with my beads tonight. If at some point you can just remind us what color that is. Yeah, that one is the green turquoise. And then oh, awesome. um, I've got coral, I've got peridot, um, tourmaline, which is a beautiful hot pink color. Yeah. Um, what else do I have? I've got aquamarine, which is sort of a light blue, and then bone, hematite. I think there's like 10 different colors to, to kind of choose from, depending yeah, on Yeah, at the, least 10, right? Color. And that aquamarine, mm -hmm. um, I would even tell people, uh, from at least my point of view, it works as a beautiful blue turquoise um, color as well, if someone is doing something with a turquoisey set of beads that has more blue to it because you know you see that all the time there's like green turquoises and blue turquoises mm -hmm. so absolutely I've got um I wouldn't bother working with more than a yard of thread at a time I have a little less than that here because I've already made at least one bead with this uh grouping but um this 
this is your first sequence of beads. I started with a size eight seed bead and then a three millimeter fire polish. And you want to go down the line until you have three of each that are staggered like that. And you only need to leave a few inches of tail thread, which is the part that is furthest away from the needle. And you're going to bring those two pieces of thread together, the needle and the tail end, cross them over, and then bring the tail through the loop because you want to tie those beads into a loop or a circle. And you want to do that one more time because we're going to do a double overhand knot. And as you can see, my beads are trying to pop through that loop. So you have to hold all of that really steady as you go. And then just give it a good tug with your fingers there. Now I'm going to work away from my knot. That's something I really prefer to do when I've got a start like this. So I'm just going through the first couple of beads. And you want to exit a size eight seed bead. So this is my needle end of my thread over on the right hand side of the camera here. And that's coming out of a size eight. So then you're going to pick up one of the 11s, which are the tiny guys, and one eight, and then another 11. And you're going to go through the next size eight. So you're skipping the fire polish that's closest to the size eight you're coming out of and then going through the next size eight. And that's going to oh, give sorry. you... Oh, you're okay. What'd you <laughs> I say? Gonna, I was just going to say, we've got lots of folks here that love the green turquoise. Uh, oh, good. Yeah. It's one of my favorite colors that you did for sure. <clears throat> I can't wait to see all of the beads I'm making for that combo all together. And this is a repeat all the way around the circle. So we're going to take our needle through with an 11, 8, and 11, skip the fire polish and go through the next size 8. So your work will look like little triangles popping off of those fire polish. Until you get it's having a little bit of trouble focusing on <clears throat> the piece. I'm wondering, sorry, my vo voice is a little scratchy. Oh, you're um, okay. Um, but there, yeah, I think it's the background that it's trying to focus yeah, on. Yeah. Much better. Kind of tam tampering with the, uh, the focus. I'll make sure and throw my hand under it every step now so that it. Perfect. Yeah so that people can see it. So when you get all the way around your, your circle there, that's what your, your work will roughly look like. And then what we call in beating in the, in the round when you're in a circle, a step up is when you come from the, the original layer that you were working in, which were those eights and those fire polish. And I'm gonna go through the first 11 and eight that I added in this round that I just completed. And when I bring my thread through that, I'm going to be, you know, coming from the outside of that grouping. And this is where the magic really happens. I'm going to add one fire polish. And again, I'll get this on here and then I'll let it focus in on what I'm doing. So your thread is coming out of the size eight over here and you work to the next grouping and skip everything else, but you put one fire polish on and go through that next size eight. Oh, hi, Stephanie. I just saw that comment pop up. <laughs> <laughs> so then I'm betting you... everything is going to pop right up as soon as you start adding these extra beads on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So as you as you give just like a snug pull to that that thread and this is like from the side view <clears throat> and then we're going to do another three millimeter and go through the next size eight that's sticking out so you want to work through those eights that are like popped out from your work and now you're already back to where you'll be connecting to the first one you exited so what that looks like when you're on the third edition and around is 
you're going to be button up next to the, the first one you added. So the step up in this round is a little shorter. You, well, I don't know. You're still going through two beads, but I like to go through a couple beads to um, keep my tension even. You could technically start from where you were at, but this, this keeps it a little bit more consistent. And then this is just the very first layer, the very end of your beaded bead. Everything else is a straight repeat. So I'm going to work a little bit faster just so we can get to the end and I can show you guys like the whole process. But for those um, who are working along, you know, you'll be able to hit that replay button and um, get, you know, the step-by-step -step instructions a little bit more thoroughly and repeat it if you need it at the end of the broadcast too. So we're back to, we're just adding the layer with the 11s and the 8s in this round. So it's every other round you do the seed beads and then you'll work back to the um, three millimeters on the rounds in between. And just remember, you always want, after you've completed a round, to go through the next two beads, which would be the, the first two from the previous. I just love, you know, watching the stuff take shape. It's really interesting to watch the beads come together and form these little clusters, even though that's not, you know, like your end result. What's nice is it keeps that work organized because you're looking for that sort of pyramid triangle each time and at the points is where you're connecting the next row of beads almost. Yes. And I love your perspective on those things because I know like bead weaving isn't your first like passion. So I think it's really helpful for people to hear that like reiterated through the eyes of somebody that doesn't do it day in and day out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I have a I definitely have a big appreciation for uh, bead weaving. I haven't, I feel like I, I could as easily. Um, I mean, I've watched you, you know, be very successful at it. Yeah, and it's just like, I never, I had stopped defaulting to that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> um, and not by even like purpose, it was, I guess in some sense, but uh, I think I just kind of um, switched my styles over time and, uh, I, you know, but this is a good excuse, A, for me to work with my friends, right, that are very <laughs> avid seed bead weavers, but also you guys have helped to kind of um, propel Silver Silk in a, in a, another fashion sense with incorporating these really cool techniques that even I wouldn't even dream of, um, and, but you guys have. And you're able to teach other people how to do it too. So that makes it super special. Well, I have said over and over again, it always like just really amazes me the um, incredibly creative things you can do. It's like, if I was sitting around looking at knitted wire, I would be like, well, that's all I can do with that and move on. And I just am so inspired by all the new things you constantly <laughs> innovate with it. So um, it's definitely like a mutual admiration situation there. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> well, what you said was beautiful and what you're making is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Every once in a while, while I'm like rambling on during these things, I can come up with like a mildly uh, eloquent thing. It, it, it's funny. I'm sure you feel the same way when you're, Working on I a do, project, yeah, it's like my so mind wanders absolutely. sometimes. <laughs> I, I totally get it. I totally get it. So, you know, as you're putting this together, I'm wondering, um, is there like a size specification that you have or recommend? Or do you just kind of wing it until you get like a pretty good like tube built? I'm so glad you asked that, Nile. It's like we rehearsed when you would prompt me to talk about finishing it off. Because <laughs> I'm literally at the point where I was going to say, this is where blah, blah, blah. <laughs> How funny. It's perfect. So my trick is once you've added 
you can see a pattern of there's two eights and then three eights and then two eights and then three eights. When you finished that, that's your cue to add one more round of the fire polish. And then that gives you a um, symmetrical shape and the length of these finished ones. Mm. And I'll show you once I get those fire polish on how I count the fire polish too, just in case that helps people solidify how they're um, counting. So the fire polish also, once you get the, the last one on, there will be three in a row. And then these two are hiding in between mm -hmm. everything else. That is so beautiful. We literally were doing two different stitches around and around. And then when you kind of pull everything tight together, it just creates this most intricate pattern. That's just stunning. I can't even believe it sometimes <laughs> the power of seed yeah. beads. the power of the seed bead yes it's small but mighty right <laughs> absolutely so i'm just going to do my um I, I i went through a few more beads in this uh last row maybe all the way around the end and once you've done that it's a good place to tie a knot now because you're working with just your single thread my knotting technique is to take my needle and you are going underneath of the thread that's already between the beads, but beside the, the bead that you're coming out of. And then when you pull that, you want to pull gently because you want to leave this little loop of thread. You're going to go through that with your needle and then you're going to pull that little knot down or the loop rather down and that will knot around your thread that's between the beads and I'm going to do that one more time so needle under the thread pull gently to make a loop and then go through the loop and pull snug now you know there's other types of beadwork I'm going to go through one more bead before I trim that off that um you in other forms of beadwork, you may choose to um, go and go through some more beads and then tie additional knots, but um, the beaded bead is not getting a lot of stress. It's just floating on a piece of wire. So I think it's safe. And um, if anybody's paying attention, yes, I'm cutting my wildfire with wire cutters. Because <laughs> I just looked around and realized I don't know where those are either. So, you know, super prepared. And then if you remember from the beginning, you tied a, a double knot with your tail thread. So you do not need to worry about knotting that um, again. You're, you're good to go. But I don't re recommend using your flush cutters for <laughs> wildfire thread. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we've all, we, I think we've all done something like that, at least. Um, I did have a question come up from Becky. She's asking, are those round spasted beads? I'm assuming she's talking about the red ones. And yeah, I think so, so those, um, I, I think that some, some businesses do call them like a round faceted and um, on our website, they're, they're named um, Fire Polish, and it's a three mm. millimeter size specifically. Perfect. And then the rest of them are just smooth seed beads. <clears throat> yeah, yes. The, the seed beads are just regular um, rocals is the very technical fancy term for, for that. <laughs> That's very fancy. Very fancy. So I've got a couple of check glass um, rondel shapes to coordinate with. Those just looked so good with your pipe chain. It's dead on. <laughs> Couldn't help myself. <laughs> nice. And, good find. And the, the beading wire that I'm working with is a 0.019. Um, so that's the medium weight in the Softflex or, or whatever brand that you uh, are working with. They're one of our favorites, but <laughs> yeah, I do love their beading wire for sure. So um, I would suggest stringing from the middle of your project before you add your um, 
pipe chain because I think that will help people to get their sizing to, you know, be a little bit more um, accurate. And here's another one of my colorways. This bead, the, mm. the fire polish is like uh, maybe travertine finish. And it looks mm. like a little stone, which travertine is named for, for a, st a type of stone. That is absolutely stunning. So I'm going to slide that wire. You want to make sure your, your beading wire is going through the center because you could, you know, in theory, like, come out through parts of the bead if you weren't um and actually I need a an accent bead on there first um if you were not paying attention to the center of the bead this is just a little like rondelle shaped spacer we carry these in like a silver brass and copper color so I tend to default to them pretty regularly because they're just so you know easy and I like the mm -hmm. that shape for stringing Mm -hmm. projects I love how my second sample is going to get done before my um <laughs> <laughs> before the original one did that's hilarious yeah you know it's, it's how it goes to right? show you like how quickly those beads can actually be made with a little bit of practice oh and yeah if you do have I mean, some spare time at the end I'm hoping that you can kind of show us um how to like start one again because oh, I think I understand the weaving and, and finishing um, but maybe we go for the starting point one more time at the end yeah absolutely um the the time frame is uh good I think for that so perfect I've, I've got all night Nila I know <laughs> <laughs> yay well this is just becoming a stunning design here I'd love that I can make as many beads as I want in virtually any size that I need to um, long and short and still be able to string up something that looks super cool. Yeah. Um, you definitely idea. could go further with those beaded beads. You would um, theoretically want to make sure you end it on a row with the fire polish to keep it um, oh, being, right. you know, the same as your start end, but yeah, I'm, keep I'm all about triple. symmetry in, unless I'm not. And then <laughs> and I can handle <laughs> My asymmetrical stuff still seems to have some kind of pattern to it, though. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about, I'm sure. Yeah, I have to kind of uh, unstring stuff to kind of rethink it to make it balanced in a different way <laughs> and not have a symmetrical pattern. I love exactly. that those are all different, too. That um, was, um, I sat down with the three different color fire polish beads. That was like my original plan was to use them and um, actually total insider information I was going to do an entire bracelet with this um, stitching and just mm -hmm. like change out where the fire polish were at and it just looked messy when it all like started to blend together but when I kept it short and spaced it out with other beads and the pipe chain it just I don't know it came together for me at that point cool so um for, for measuring, I would say, um, actually, these, these handy dandy bead stoppers, of course, I only allotted myself one tonight. <laughs> <laughs> At least you have the one. <laughs> but I have the one. So um, I would say using something like that to see how far the beads you know, hit across your wrist or the person that you're making the bracelet for and totally would make a stunning necklace where you could do more beaded beads. You could have more pipe chain on the edges. Um, definitely, I think would be a fun, I can't believe I didn't think of that until just now. <laughs> <laughs> so then for me, I would take the pipe chain and just, you know, go from side to side on my wrist where I saw, you know, the, the beaded part hit. Now, Neela, you can tell me, are you using your flush cutters to cut your pipe chain? Cause that's what I've been doing. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. You were, doing, you were doing the right thing here. <laughs> um, the only thing I wondered is, do you need to cut it a little short to accommodate for the clasp or do you kind of just wait till the end to figure out what that measurement looks like? 
seriously get out of my head. That's exactly what I was about. <laughs> How funny. <laughs> yeah. So I would say once you do that, I would string the pipe chain on. And I like the idea of having like another one of these little metal spacers on oh, yeah. the other oh, side of the pipe chain. Finishes it. Uh-huh. Yep. And then leave yourself like a couple inches of the flux wire and then I would let all that fall the flex wire and give yourself like the same amount of space. See if I can do this on camera here. So like bring your flex wire up so that you're, um, you're going to cut it where the very end of the other pieces. Mm -hmm. And then that allows you to, um, and, for anyone who didn't notice that I had been stringing everything on, it was still attached to the spool. I like to do that because um, there's less waste that way for me. I am not good at measuring the, the flex wire before I, you know, get all of my bracelet pieces on there. Oh yeah. That's a good way to conserve it for sure. It's a yeah. Good idea. So like getting all of that attached, then I can bring it around and see, I think, the way I like flushed everything out, I probably cut that um, tubing just, you know, just a touch shorter. And I think that'll be good. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and use my crimp bead and finish off the one side of the bracelet. And then again, symmetry, asymmetry. If I have to chop just a little bit off on the other side, I always tell people if anyone's close enough to see something like that, you should smack them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's funny or even if they comment on such a thing <laughs> right seriously like Come nobody's on, got time for that so <laughs> i am going to say with these designs i'm gonna just bring my crimp bead through and oh where's my players I'm just gonna crimp the end flat. I'm not even using my fancy crimp tool because I get lazy and I do that. <laughs> and then I'm cutting it right at that bead and gonna let everything else fall down fall there. Yeah. And that clasp, I'll let everybody know, is our absolute favorite, our ball and socket clasps. We have them on our website. Mm -hmm. Um, the design is, I don't know, just genius in my opinion. They, they work really well. They hold up and they're easy. Like they're the easiest thing to do on my own wrist that I have ever used. Peggy is asking what size are the two glass beads, um, that are in. So if you had to pick a millimeter size, I'm wondering. Right. Like <laughs> you must have totally been able to tell that they weren't labeled with a size when I, uh, when I was looking at my strand, cause I don't have um, a size, but I have them in several different colors. So I would say, gosh, I wish I had like a, the, the diameter because they're a rondelle, you would have like a, a number by a number, like a number X number, oh, right. to get the total uh -huh. size. So I would say like the width of them from hole to hole is like an eight millimeter maybe. Mm -hmm. And then the length, is maybe at least a 12 or a 14. They're pretty substantial. Yeah, it almost looks like a like an 18 by 8 sort of size. Okay. But yeah, yeah. If you they're pretty, if you feel pretty like you've seen that ones. before in the in <laughs> but the they wild. don't have to be exactly that. They can be whatever you want it to be. <laughs> well, like I said, I'm pretty uh pretty in the dark about those because they're uh oh, well I meant like bead wise it could be whatever oh oh yeah 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 so like <laughs> Neela's like yeah or whatever but you can you just say. make up a size and it's fine <laughs> <laughs> so um the ones from Heather Powers I don't recall what she makes her disc beads at but that's what they're called those are her disc beads in case oh, that yeah. helps with the sizing for people but um 
yeah, this is a little bit roomy on me. I would tell people to definitely, um, if you're sizing it for yourself, which I actually was not making this bracelet for myself. Um, I just was using my wrist to kind of guide everyone. Um, you would probably yeah. want to do just a little bit of trimming after you, um, you know, cut the initial piece of the tubing. But with that chunky portion, it's also not bad to have a little bit of wiggle room. And I don't know about you guys, say, but in the yeah. summer, a little extra room in my bracelets is not a bad thing either. <laughs> Man, that's that is how so that cool. Works, just that little snap mechanism. Wow. And Neely and I, I were talking, talking about oh, this. Ahead. Oh, we, we were talking about this before we went live. I think that um, we don't mind that like raw edge on the, I mean, it doesn't look raw to me, I guess, when you cut the tubing. And as long as you, I give it a little twist like that with my um, fingers and thumb just to get the little. Yeah, I've noticed that it doesn't really affect the design much and the wire doesn't unfray or anything like that, uh, or just no, um, not at the at all. ends. Yeah, it's it's just it's perfect. It's easy, and I cannot believe you finished that bracelet already <laughs> within like thirty minutes. <laughs> well, that was like the magic of Facebook having other other parts of it completed, right? Like <laughs> that part is kind of a magician like trick. <laughs> That's true. That's and true. then I am so getting I'm, some more thread I'm, out so that um, I can demo the start of it again for you. Oh, perfect. Yeah, I think um, I think we kind of learned the the stages of it, but it would be nice to kind of revisit uh, that you know, for one more time, just for either the folks that are just now tuning in or um, for replay purposes, it would be nice to kind of slow down step by step and yeah, really definitely work, help us work through it. So I've got my end of my thread here and um, my trick for anyone that has trouble threading their needles with this really heavy, I mean, 10 pound is a pretty heavy um, fishing line style thread to be, um, be, or to be, you know, putting in a needle. So you barely can see the end between my fingers. And that is what is stabilizing the thread so that when I like, sorry, I keep hitting my camera, when you lower that needle down between your fingers, it is already on that thread. And then I just grab that little end and get it the rest of the way through. And I know I didn't do that on camera to begin with either. So that's a great refresh. And then I'm going to string on a size eight seed bead, a three millimeter, size eight, three millimeter, size eight, three millimeter. And that is my first row of this beaded bead. And you only need just like four inches of thread at the tail end, which is the furthest part away from your needle. That's where you're gonna bring your beads down. And then you're gonna take those two pieces of thread, the tail and needle side and cross them over each other. And this tail side, the short end, I'm gonna bring into that loop that I've created and through the circle. It's just like if you're tying a knot, just bring the thread around each side. And then when you bring that down close to the beads, you want to just pull really slowly. And then you cross those two pieces of thread back over each other and bring the tail around and through the loop again. So when you get that down, that's your overhand knot there, a double knot. And this allows you to get the beads into position and also not have to do anything else with that tail. When your complete, um, when your bead is complete, you can just chop that tail off. And then I'm taking my needle from the spot that I started at and going through several beads at a time, but I do want to end up by coming out of a size eight. And your knot can kind of get pulled around in that circle. So you can pull on the tail to, to even that part back out. But your, your needle end, you want that to be coming out of a size eight. And then we'll 
start the next row by adding one size 11, one size eight, and one size 11. And those are your seed beads. And you're gonna go from the eight that you're coming out of, skip the four millimeter. And the direction I happen to be working is counterclockwise, but that would just depend on, you know, what direction somebody started to move their needle through their work um, after they mm -hmm. made the knot. So mm -hmm. don't get caught up with like, it has to be clockwise or counterclockwise because the goal is just to continue to move in the same direction around your work. So we're gonna do the same sequence of seed beads again. And we happen to be over here by the tail, but again, you're coming out of an eight, you skip a three millimeter and you go through that next eight seed bead. And you do that a third time and a, that's your final time. And when you do this, this little eight is the one you wanna go through that's between those two fire polish. Don't go up to this one because that's the one that you added in this row and you need you need to complete this process in the, the very first row before you continue on. And that's what it'll look like before you move on to your next step. And then that step up to get to the next edition, you come out of that lower eight and you go through an 11 and then you're coming out of that eight at the point above your, your fire polish. Mm -hmm. So every other row is gonna be fire polish with seed beads in the rows between. So this is a fire polish row. You go from a size eight, you add the three millimeter fire polish, and then you go through, get that tail out of the way, go through the next size eight, you skip everything between. And when you pull everything, I'll let that hang loose again, it snugs up and fills that space between those beads. And then the next addition that we're coming out of that eight, I'm gonna add my fire polish and you go all the way over to this third point with the size eight on it. Perfect. And then I got to find, there's one more. <laughs> <laughs> and when you go through this last point of your eight, it's going to be the one that's very next to the um, three millimeter that you started your additions with. Gotcha. And then everything when it's tightened, of course, I can't keep it you know, all on camera still for more than a half a second, but <laughs> it'll, it'll look like you'll see a little bit of your 11s underneath of it, but it will look like the eights and the three millimeters from your first round. Oh, I just That's saw perfect. like a longer comment from somebody that looks like they're going to get some use out of their stash. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Becky said that she is going to save this video and watch it later on replay so that she can uh, figure out a way to use up some of her faceted seed beads. And uh, but, well, she said just said faceted beads, but I also have quite the collection of seed beads and this would be a fun way to use them up. Absolutely. Very so cool. then it's just a repeat of the rest of those seed beads and um, fire polish later layers. Yes. Yeah, for sure. And um, we we talked about that earlier in the video as well. So that is perfect. Um, I'm going <laughs> to flash us both. Finished. Finished bead. There we are. magic again. Oh, yes. Oh, that just ended up so perfect. I love that the pipe chain kind of just fills in as a chain component to all this. And then the real superstar is those beaded beads there. 
which work up quite quickly, I think, once well, you get the hang of it. And I would also argue that without that pipe chain, if you just had a bunch of those bead of beads all together with other beads between them, that it would look like a hot mess. <laughs> the pipe chain like, <laughs> brings some balance and like uh, class to the the kind of I don't know pile of beads that it looks like without that. <laughs> It's true. It, you could either go super crazy and do all beaded beads and just have like the biggest necklace ever, um, which I still <laughs> think would look beautiful or, um, you know, try and not make as many and just kind of cheat and put pipe chain on it and call it good. <laughs> what kind of a shortcut would do we all want to take here? <laughs> Well, um, I'm not seeing any big questions unless uh, if anyone wants to chime in real quick in these last couple minutes. Um, otherwise, you guys can definitely reach out to our individual emails. Mine is silversilk, uh, orders at silversilkonline.com. And Cassandra, where are some places that they can reach you? So um, our Facebook page is just our, our um, business name is the handle for it. So beads to live by all one word and messages on there. I get that right on my phone. I can um, reply there. Um, I can, I think I can chat and send you the, um, or my email address. Let's see if it'll pop up here for you. I um, used to have a really like streamlined business email and then, um, I switched website hosts and I mm. no longer have that option. So I sent that in the little <laughs> chat bubble if you want to share that with people. But I know when you say email addresses out loud that are like letters and numbers, it's just like sometimes hard for people to follow that. But um, um, our website actually is a contact um, page too, where people can send messages straight through the website as well. But Neela is going to share my... Um, my email address too for you guys. All there, perfect. Just posted that. Um, there was a question here that I saw pop up. Okay. So Cindy is asking, uh, I still struggle with finishing. Is there a secret to getting the tension correct so that there's no beading, uh, exposed beading wire? So um, I can, if we have a minute, I can finish off that brown bracelet and go through that part again to okay. answer that question. Sure. Awesome. Sounds like a good idea. Because I totally was using a thicker piece of uh, beading wire on that one originally, and I don't want to, um, I don't want to do that. I think the heavy uh, weight of the wire is too, too much. So um I'm going to use, here's another trick for everybody. Once you have a bracelet that you know, like the size of um, your pipe chain or that you maybe want to shorten just a little bit, um, you can use that as like a template. I got to get my, uh, get my beaded bead demo out of there. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um chop down your, your pipe chain by creating a little template piece. And then, you know, you want that second one to be the same size. So from your nail while you're at it, the whole nine yards. <laughs> so then I like to, if I know the size of my work, I like to go ahead and put, um, my crimp on one end and finish off that side. I think that right there will um, make your whole life a little bit easier. And I'm just over here trying to like guide my, I think I've got kind of a tight crimp bead trying to guide my wire through that. So, you know, that end is easy, right? Like, that's not what we're talking about. But just to mm -hmm. show you guys what I'm fussing with over here. <laughs> and I'm 100% mixing some, like, copper things with some brass and in, um, in the sample. Because I think that, I mean, I'm a big fan of mixing metals, I guess, in general. But the colors of my beaded beads and my... Um, oh, they all kind of complement each other anyway. Yeah, and that in that project, it's like I really felt like there was a lot of like 
different metal colors happening. So, okay, so let's get the start to finish from one end to the other. I'm using, um, I've got my clasp on there and then I'm going to throw on one of those little donut spacer beads, my pipe chain piece. And on this end, I definitely am going to go ahead and just tuck. And I've got my little wire fuzzies that I haven't cleaned off the end of my pipe chain there, but they fell away pretty easily. So I've got mm -hmm. the wire tucked in there. And then, of course, now I'm like kind of hurrying. So <laughs> everything's going <laughs> a, little less, a little less smoothly <laughs> than it uh did the first time. And While trying. you're streaming that, I yeah. do have a question that you could probably answer on the fly. Can three millimeter bicones be substituted for the fire polish? I would say that is probably a safe bet. And that's a great question. Um, you might notice the shape of your bead working a little differently because with a bicone, um, shape the center is going to push out and then the ends are going to like scrunch in but mm -hmm. I think that that's a great idea to like play around with the the beaded bead process yeah I I would be curious to see how that would um form the shape or manipulate it I guess um just depending on the the cut of the bead really. Yeah, definitely. And I mean, there's yeah, yeah. other shapes of beads. There's um, something called an English cut that might be able to be um, substituted for the three millimeter fire polish. You just want to make sure you're always working with a three millimeter. Otherwise you would have to either adjust your seed bead sizes or like quantities of seed beads, which if uh, that sounds scary, you probably just want to practice with the uh, <laughs> requested sizes and tape first. Yeah. Okay, so we are at the end. Um, something else I like to do is I like to keep my clasp hooked together like that while I'm attaching the second end. I don't know that there's really like a scientific... Um, reasoning for that but it's just something that I tend to do so I've got my crimp bead and all my other pieces on my cord for the bracelet and I'm going through that open end of my clasp and then my the reason I went ahead and did all of that is because I really don't know if I could like explain what I do without actually showing you guys um you know as you pull your end of your wire, you've got, you know, that big gap. And I totally know, I can't remember who the question was from, but um, I know what she's talking about. Mm -hmm. So I work back towards my um, last, whatever I've added to my material, um, which is in this case, the pipe chain, the rondelle spacer and the crimp bead. And then once you get to a certain point, you should be able to hold on to those pieces in the place that they're in. And you've got a big long loop over here. Everything else is taut and you can pull on your end of your beading wire. And then that gives you a slackless <laughs> and you've got like the little space there, but when you, you have to leave a tiny bit of space because otherwise you're going to have a really rigid bracelet. And that was something that I just realized as I was talking about it, that's the other reason I like to leave my clasp attached to itself, because if you're working in a circle, you are going to have your like desired bracelet drape. You're not going to end up with a really straight, rigid bracelet because I don't know if you have tight tension, that's totally a thing. Yeah. I think that's really sound advice. Cause I was thinking it'd be good to have some sort of a, a roundish shape, a good a drape, as you mentioned to your bracelet. So Having a little bit of slack is not a bad thing. Um, it's when you it's have that, that, you know, <laughs> half inch gap that probably is not visually pleasing. But 
I think a couple millimeters is kind of expected because you want to make sure that that bracelet does form to your wrist. So, so beautiful. No slack that shows between your beads or your pipe chain. So I think that's your goal is to like have that drape, like you said, Neil, like exactly right without, um, you know, having like a bunch of the wire beading wire show. Yes, indeed. Well, thanks, Cassandra, for showing us that. I'm going to bring it around to all two of us. Yeah, thank you <laughs> Plus so much for having me again. This was fantastic. I really enjoyed making this project. Oh, well, we love your project. You're insanely talented and um, have shed quite a bit of light on how to stitch these seed beads into a beautiful beaded bead, which um, just complements the pipe chain and really just, uh, says a lot about your personal style, which I'm in love with. So thank you so much for sharing with us. Thank you. All these secrets. Um, guys, I think we posted our links earlier um, for where you can catch us. Remind us one more time of your business and its website and where they can find these beads. So our business name is Beads to Live By, and you can find us under that handle on any of the social media we're on, on YouTube. And then our, our website name is just www.beadstoliveby.com. Perfect. Well, thank you again, Cassandra. And uh, I'm sure we will be seeing you again at some point um, here in the near future for another fabulous seed bead lesson. Do you want to flash the project that you'll be teaching independently um, from your store? Yes. So I have um, I have a scheduled class for, I'm calling it the cartouche collar, which is an Egyptian term. And um, it's one of the few that I could find that I liked that didn't have to do with death because I don't know if you know a lot about Egyptian <laughs> um, history, yeah. but they are very death centric. So <laughs> didn't want my jewelry associated with, you know, death and dying, but um, it felt very Egyptian. This is the first colorway I did. So what's fun about this project is this portion up here could be like, if, if you can make these beaded beads, then you're ready to do something like this. And you could easily string the whole necklace on the flex wire like we um, just showed tonight. But if you are an intermediate or an advanced beater and you're wanting to do something really decorative and fun, I'm also going to include the instructions on how to do that stitch portion on the end to, to attach the um, clasp. But um, it's a really wearable project. I've made three colors for kits and then a fourth just this week and um it is is one of my new favorite um pieces to wear and to make so i'm gonna have a hard time stopping myself from making one with every color pipe chain that you have me <laughs> <laughs> i won't stop you because uh i think your beaded portion is just a beautiful compliment so guys you can find out more about the class on bees to live by.com and enroll and uh support the store but also just make this gorgeous design um, and then show it off in our Silkies group. Um, I think that concludes our class. And thank you so much again for sharing this wonderful information and uh, technique with us. And we will see you guys another classroom time. Thanks, Take guys. Oh, there we go. Bye. Bye. <laughs>